Welcome back. This is the tool post on my lathe. It's an Aloris size BXA quick change tool post. It's a good tool post. There are, however, a couple of changes, dare I say, improvements that I would like to make to the way that it works currently. This nut is what's used to tighten the tool post down to the compound and to secure the entire unit to the lathe. Being a quick change tool post, the general idea is that once it's secured to the lathe, you shouldn't have to fuss with this very much. However, there are times when you need to loosen up this nut and adjust the tool post in one direction or another for one reason or another. Maybe you need to swing the compound and now your tool isn't aligned with the work. Or you have an odd feature or a shoulder that you need to get into and you need to turn your tool ever so slightly to get a better angle at it. Whatever the case may be, it's those situations where you reach for your comically oversized wrench, loosen the nut, turn your tool holder, tighten the nut, put your comically oversized wrench away, and then get back to work. I would like to avoid having to reach for the comically oversized wrench. I know what you might be thinking. That seems like a pretty flimsy reason to completely reinvent the wheel on something that seems to be working fine as it is. And to that I'd say, also, it's ugly. It's got all this stuff stacked up and it's sticking up like two inches above the tool post. That's just completely unnecessary. Which, if I have to be honest, is probably the real reason. I don't mind having to reach for the wrench every now and then. I keep it by the machine anyway. But this, this we have to fix. So let me show you what's going on in here, and then I'll show you the plan for fixing it. So first, of course we have the nut. Underneath of that, we have a thrust washer. And this just takes some of the friction out of tightening the nut and it allows me to get things a bit tighter without having to use as much force. And then underneath of that, I have what is essentially just a big washer or spacer to take up all of the extra room on this tool post. And this, hold on, this is the plan to replace it. So first off, we have this piece here, which is the main piece that we're gonna be making. This bore here, which is this bore here, is going to be threaded to fit the tool post. So this is going to completely replace the nut. So this is gonna go away, this is gonna be there instead, and then all of this is going to fit up inside of this bore. So that's this bore here, this recess. All of this stuff will fit up inside of this recess. So on the top of the tool post, this whole stack up of odds and ends is gonna be replaced by a nice stainless steel cap. And all of our functional bits will be hidden inside of the cap. And for this project, I have this piece of inch and a half diameter, 304 stainless steel. So I guess that's enough chit chat. Let's get started. After a quick trip to the bandsaw to separate the part from the stock, I left myself about an eighth of an inch extra just for wiggle room here. It is then time to head on over to the lathe and as usual, start off by facing the part. This will provide a nice square face for some of the drilling and boring operations that are gonna come next. The first features that I want to tackle are the threaded bore and the recess on the underside of the part. So I'll use a center drill to prepare for the correct tap drill size for the tap that I'll be using to thread that bore. And the micrometer scale on the tailstock comes in handy for setting the depth of this bore here since it's not a super critical dimension. In retrospect, I definitely should have used a pilot drill here. I did get away with it. However, the web on this drill was kind of thick and that made pushing through this stainless pretty tough. Using a pilot drill would have just made this operation much smoother than it was. The next feature is the recess on the bottom of the part. To set my depth for this feature, I'll simply touch off on the part zero the micrometer scale on my carriage hand wheel, 
Then use that to move the carriage forward the appropriate depth for the feature, and then just lock down a carriage stop. I have found that this method will easily get me to within one or two thou of my target dimension with very minimal effort. I've become a huge fan of the micrometer scales on all of the different axes of this machine. A quick check with my flea market bore mic says that we are just shy of the target diameter on this bore. I'm shooting for an inch and a quarter on this, give or take a thou in either direction. It's not super critical and just have a little bit left to go. Less than a thou over is plenty close for what we're doing. And of course, adding chamfers because we're civilized people. And a nice generous chamfer here to help the tap get started in the bore. Next, I need to get this bore tapped for the 5 8 thread on the tool post. This is a pretty substantial tap, so I want to use the machine to help me get it started. To do that, I am going to set the machine to its slowest speed, 105 RPM, and then just bump the spindle a couple of times while I apply pressure from the tailstock. Because the machine only goes down to 105 RPM, I don't feel comfortable trying to power tap the entire way. So once it gets started, I will just finish off the rest tapping by hand. And I'll just use this piece of 5 8 18 TPI all thread to quickly check the fit. Because the OD of the stock is already at the finished diameter for the part, an inch and a half, I'm just going to take a light skim cut to clean up this outside surface, taking as little material as possible as the last step before turning the part around to work on the other side. It's okay if there's a slight seam left between these surfaces after the cleanup, as that will be machined away later. Next, it's time to face the part to its finished length, aiming for about an inch and a half here, but again, this isn't a critical dimension. I guess it's always easy to nail it when it doesn't really matter. Now I need to set up for the big decorative chamfer on this side of the part. Because this feature is cosmetic, as I set this up and choose my angle, I'm considering how I'm going to set up for the operations that I need to do next on the milling machine. You'll see more about what I mean by this in just a minute when we move to the mill. And now, we just machine the taper. And of course, another chamfer, because we're civilized people. Heading over to the milling machine, 
This is where having a little bit of forethought when choosing the angle of the taper on the front of the part is going to pay off. Because I chose an angle for that front feature that I know is included in my set of angle blocks, setting the part up in the mill is now as easy as dropping the appropriate angle block into the vise and dropping the part on top of it. This ensures that the angled surface that I now need to drill and tap a hole in is now square with the axis of the spindle. If you have an indicator with one of these round stems on the back, here is an easy way to find the center of a round part in your vise. Simply stick that stem into a collet and this will put your indicator in line with the spindle of your machine. And then you can just sweep the indicator back and forth on the part and when you find the high spot, you've found the center of your part. Of course, the finer the tip and the higher the resolution the indicator, the more accurate this will be. This is plenty close for what we're doing here. And I'll just find my position in the x-axis by eye. Again, this isn't really critical. To get started here, I'm just going to use a 5 16 end mill to cut a flat on the surface the same size as the tap drill. This will just help to make sure that the drill can get a straight start. I'll just use a quarter inch spot drill to spot my hole location. And once it's spotted, I'll move directly to the appropriate tap drill size for the 3 8 16 thread. A chamfer because we're civilized people. Once again, I'm just gonna tap by hand. 304 is a tougher material and I would much rather just not break a tap off <laughs> in my nearly finished part. So I just feel more comfortable doing it this way. Finally, I'm just putting a half inch flat around the hole and this is just so that the half inch handle can sit flush against the part. And that's the main part done. Just gonna knock out the handle next. Not gonna waste a lot of time on detail here. Uh, pretty simple, this is just a piece of half inch 1018 cold roll. And really I'm just putting the matching 3 8 16 thread on the end of it to thread into the cap. The last piece to knock out is the spacer. Again, not gonna spend a lot of time on this. It's just a round piece of steel with a hole drilled in it. Using 1141 hot roll for this, just because it's the right size stock that I have. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. The only other thing to note about this part in particular is that I'm gonna make this part a little bit longer or taller than it needs to be. And when I fit the cap onto the tool post, I will then trim this part as is necessary just to make sure that the handle when the tool post is tightened down ends up in the right place. And I'll do all that off camera so you won't see that, but just know that's the only really significant thing to know about this part.
So that is the last part that we needed. I did go ahead and shorten the tool post off camera as well. It was just gonna be too long for our new cap. I just took it over to the bandsaw and cut off about three quarters of an inch. I think it should work. I haven't tested it yet, but I think it should be fine. So I guess the last thing that we have to do is head back over to the lathe, put it all together and see how it looks. All right, let's see how we did. I have to admit, I am very happy with how this thing turned out. It looks so much nicer than before. And of course it works. So now if I wanna spin my tool post for whatever reason, I can just bump this loose, spin it where I need it, nip it back down, and I'm back in action. It's so quick and easy, almost effortless. It's a big upgrade from having to reach for that giant wrench. Also, thanks to the thrust washer, there's very little effort required to either loosen it or tighten it down. That's very little force that I just applied and this thing isn't going anywhere. So yeah, I am definitely happy with this. I'm happy with its functionality. I'm happy with the way that it looks. You know, I think this is one of those small things that's really easy to overlook and you just kind of end up living with these minor inconveniences. But if you spend as much time at your machine as I do, a simple upgrade like this can be a huge quality of life improvement. And I'm sure there are other people out there who are reaching for a wrench and have at least thought about doing something better. If you've thought about it, do it. You won't regret it. It's an easy project. It doesn't take long. You can get creative with it and do whatever you want. But when it's all said and done, I guarantee that you're going to be happy you took the time to do it. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for this one. As usual, if you have made it this far into the video, thank you so very much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And when you do things like watch the entire video, like, comment, it tells the algorithm that you enjoyed the content, which means it'll get shared with more people. So thank you. If you're already a subscriber, thank you again. And if you haven't subscribed, but you like what I do here and feel like I've earned it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you feel like I haven't, let me know what I can do better in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, get out there, make something awesome. Most importantly, have some fun, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon.